Aloha, my internet family. How are you? Welcome back to Practical Printing. On our last video, we talked about the new Prusa SL1. We did a complete walkthrough on the new product and showed you every nook and cranny of it. At the end of it, I told you I would follow up with a video on their CW1 companion piece, which is the curing washing station. So, Let's take a look at this guy in detail as well, so you can see exactly what it is, how it does what it does, and what exactly it does. Let's do it. So the CW1 curing washing station does a couple of things. It allows you to take your part on the vat right out of the SL1 printer with the part attached. You can put it into it to wash the piece first. Then you can separate the model once it's clean from the build plate. Set the build plate aside. Your build plate is also washed at this point so now you can just wipe it down with the paper or towel. Start another print and you can put the piece into this on the rotating disc and it will cure it with UV light after it blows it dry. So let's take a look at what you get with this guy. I'm going to pop the top and show you what comes with it first. The first piece is this tank here which is your washing tank and it fits in and easily removes and we'll cover the rest of this in details in a minute, just like we did in the SL1 video, I will get you close-ups of everything. But this is the drying platform. For the tank, you just fill this with IPA, typically 99% IPA, uh, isopropyl alcohol. Uh, not the good IPA, but isopropyl alcohol. You have the lid for the tank, and you have a basket. The basket allows you to drop your tools or other pieces that you want to wash um, in this rather than just hanging your build plate here, you know, from the lid. So, and of course this is just a, just a metal restaurant pan. If you need to find a, or get a replacement or you want a spare, uh, you should be able to pick it up at Amazon or any restaurant supply. You just have to find the size. The last piece that is this part here that goes inside there. Now this has a stainless steel bearing at the bottom and it has magnets embedded in it. This just, if you can see it there, just spins. And basically the build plate on there will rotate while it's cleaning, which will cause this to rotate and it'll create a whirlwind action inside your IPA. And I'll show you that in detail here in just a few minutes. But essentially all you do, push the button on here, you'll slide your vat onto it, slide the lid onto the bin with your IPA in it, you'll put that into here and then via the menu you'll hit wash and it'll go and it'll wash it for about five minutes. Take it out at that point, lift this off. I would still be gloved up normally during that time. You'll separate your model from the plate, set the model center here, close the lid for this one because you are exposing UV light at this point, and it will automatically detect that this is not installed, that the lid is closed, and it'll say, okay, now it's time for drying and curing. Push the go ahead and go button, and it will sit there, it will blow hot air on it to dry your part first, evaporate all of the IPA off of it, and then it will expose it while rotating to UV light so it completely cures your part. So let's take a look at this in detail. We've got the unit here. I'm not going to bother showing you the back. The only thing on the back is the power supply connection and an off, off switch, which we will trigger there, which turns our LCD on. You have the two upper bars here with a non-slip rubber coating on it, which prevents the tank from sliding around. You have an optical sensor here on the back which detects when the tank is present. And inside the door here is a push button switch which 
it tells you that the lid is closed. And then you have the turntable down here, which is for parts drying and curing. You've got two strips of UVs here that fire up and one here. So for sake of illustration, let's run through the quick process of drying a print. You're going to take your vat, uh, or your, your, your tank, I should say. You're going to drop this in, make sure that it goes all the way down to the bottom. And for sake of illustration here, I am using water in here, not IPA. You can do that if you just purely want to wash a part after an alcohol rinse. Um, that's where it may be handy to have a second spindle or uh, a, a second tank. Pretend this has a, a print hanging from the bottom of it and it's fresh out of your SL1. Again, you would normally be gloved up at this point because you're dealing with wet resin covering these parts. You're going to push the knob on the back here, like so, which pops this out. You're going to slide it on and now it's locked to it. You're going to put that onto the tank. Going to lift this onto the unit and you're just going to push the start washing button. It's going to run through the process, which is currently set for about five minutes. That is adjustable via the menu system. Uh, note, if you were to decide to take this out of here, it would detect it and pause the machine. When you put it back in, you have to say push continue because it's paused or you can cancel it. And what I want to show you is without this going, if you can see that or if I can angle that up there a little more, that is the vortex that it creates by spinning that piece inside there to wash your parts. You can also stop it if it's early, if it was done. We'll set that aside. Now at this point, let's assume that your part was washed. You're going to use your scraper to scrape it off the build plate and you're just going to set your model into the center of the table there. So let's say this was your model. You're going to set it at the center of the table. You're going to close the lid. The text down here is now going to change to start drying and curing. We're going to do that. You'll hear the fan spin up as it starts creating hot air. Uh, there's a heating element inside there that will heat up the and warm the air. And let's see if I can show you this. Now I'm going to throw on some UV glasses so it's safe for me to do this, but let's see if I can show you this. So that's what it looks like rotating and it's blowing hot air out of here. We'll close the door and we'll let this get to the process of where the UV kicks in and then I'll show you that as well. Because you can see the UV has kicked in now and you can see it just a little bit of light leaking out of the lid and it tells you that it is drying on the front giving you a countdown. Uh, again, I've got UV glasses on so I'm going to pop this open and kind of give you a sneak peek. So you can see how much light it actually generates. There's a small one on the bottom here and the two at the sides, and it's actually very warm inside here. Okay, the last thing I wanna show you here is a quick walk through the menu system. As you can see right now, it's set for starting drying and curing, which is uh, when you, you know, put your piece in, close the lid, you just hit to go. You've got a few other options. You can set your runtime for both the curing, drying, and washing runtime. You can set your rotation speed for the curing and washing. And you can go into your settings, which gives you a couple other details. You have a run mode for drying and curing, which allows you to set it for drying and curing curing only or drying only in case you need to just uh, cure a print without drying it or or some other reason you would want to change it you have an option for doing a preheat 
where you, if you enable it, you can set a target temperature, for example, 30 degrees, which is what the Surayatek blue resin likes to be cured at. You have the option of uh, unit system, which is just information about it. And of course there's information here, which is the firmware version that's running and sound settings where you can have sound for the response, which gives you your tick every time you change it. I always turn that off. And you can have your finish beep, you can have it continuous or just once, so that when, uh, whenever the curing or drying process or the washing process is done, it'll just give you a little dee dee to let you know. And that is about it. It's really that simple. Um, note, let me, open the lid here and I'm going to cover that sensor uh, we're going to be back see how it's start drying and curing now if the tank was in there it's going to say start washing drying and curing washing so it's detecting that whenever you put the the vat in there and that wraps it up on the menu well, there you have it. That is my up close and personal look at the CW1 curing and washing station. I think this is a great asset or companion piece to the SL1 printer. It makes post curing, washing, treating your resin prints that much cleaner, easier, simpler to do. Uh, if you have the ability to invest in this when you get your SL1, I highly encourage doing so um, especially if you're in a commercial or a business environment and you want to keep things quicker and in more in production um, is it hundred percent necessarily necessary absolutely not you can manually process your parts and cure your parts just like we used to do with the Moai but this makes it just that much neater and cleaner it's a wonderful solution. All right, so if you like this video, be sure to ring that bell down below and subscribe wherever they're at down there. You'll get notified of upcoming videos here on the channel. Um, as I alluded to last time, I'm working on trying to print out all the parts for a Mark 3S in resin on the SL1. Um, that's a slow process as it's a, a challenge to get some of the pieces to fit in that limited space. So stay tuned for that one. Uh, one way or another, we'll have a video on it. It's either a colossal success or a colossal fail. And I've got a bunch of other ideas at the back of my noggin here, um, just waiting to get out with the SL1. So stay tuned. We'll see you next time on Practical Printing. Aloha.